know, some people would say, well, oh yeah, oh yeah, we found some fish. Oh yeah. July 4th. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. It's 5 15 a.m. I'm gonna get a good hopefully half a day, three quarters of a day of uh, bass fishing in. I'm on one of the smaller lakes on the Iowa Great Lakes today and yeah uh, I'm gonna just get started. First thing I'm throwing is a white and chartreuse slobber knocker. Um, my other setups, so I've got three bait casters with me, all abu reels, all abu rods, one spinning which is Shimano Reel Fenwick Rod, and then my Fly Rod, which is a Hardy Reel Fenwick Rod. Um, I'm rocking, I start up, my plan and goal for the day, my coming in was, you know, I have a slobber knocker, a jig, um, a little underspin, a drop shot, and then a streamer. I think with those five things, I won't even really have to change, but hopefully I'm not proven wrong. But yeah, I'm gonna start fishing um, this dock that's to the left of me that's on a point and it extends across this bay that has a nice section of uh, boulders and stuff so I'm gonna work that and let's see what we can find. So right now, I'm just working a jig and a slobber knocker along this offshore weed, um, or not really weed, but boulder slash gravel line. It's out in a little deeper with some little dips and rises and general good structure. I'm just kind of looking for some offshore bass right now. I should probably be a lot more inshore because it's the morning um, and they're probably pushed up. You know, this is where I can probably catch them on docks and on, um, you know, just casting towards shore, which I'll try once I get to the other side of the point. But this is where I really thought they would be, or any, especially big ones, would be out on these isolated rock piles and at this point you know I'm really trying to focus on getting that big fish that four and a half plus but yeah I'll just keep throwing through here and work my way around work some shore work some docks throw the jig throw some slobber knockers spinner baits whatever just throwing it all and mixing it up until we figure out what the bite is and where it is but yeah it's a beautiful morning out here and hopefully i can find a big one like like i was saying you know at this point i would kind of rather find one big one than you know 10 three pounders but i just love being out here and enjoying the day regardless so that's what I'm going to do, and if I catch 
three pounders, that's a ton of fun. If I catch some hogs, that's a ton of fun. We'll see how the day progresses. I do have to say though, for confidence, I would have thought I would have gotten bit already. I've fished this lake from shore a few times and I know, at least you know, the past week the, the bite has been on. So I thought, you know, coming straight to this offshore point, which looked to be the best offshore structure in the lake, you know, I thought that would have proved a pretty quick fish, but I guess that's not quite the case. Could be too, I have no banana in my boat today. Maybe that's it. It's the no banana bad luck. Hopefully the uh, cast montage isn't too long and we find some fish soon and I can talk to you guys about that. But until then, it's time to make a bunch of casts. Right species, wrong size. <laughs> okay, a little large now. It's at least a good sign. One of the slobber knocker ate it on a very, very, very fast, aggressive retrieve. Um, I was just pretty much done with that cast. He was bringing it back super fast, and he decided he wanted it. away from these docks. <laughs> oh, it's a decent one. And spit. Oh, shit. Okay, lost him. <laughs> That's my fault. Just trying to get the boat out of there. You know, I was really focused on the trolling motor and not landing that fish. Probably a two and a half pounder. Nothing huge, but okay. Fish number two wasn't officially landed, but that's a good sign. It's a fish on a dock, which, you know, tells me something. So. That's good. 
good, that's good. Hopefully I can find a few more in these docks and actually get them in the boat. There we go, another little guy, but another fish on the jig. Okay, there we go, another little fish. So yeah, I've just got that Berkeley skipping jig, a little craw color, and then I'm throwing that Pit Boss trailer on the, uh, the back of it, just in a matching kind of red and green craw color yeah it's a lethal uh, little combo We can get another. This is a great little shoot to pitch down. Okay, well, I'm definitely a little confused. Or, well, I guess the bites just must not be what I thought it would be is what I should say. I just coming into this, you know, I had my areas picked out and those didn't seem to work in the morning. So, you know, I thought then maybe they'd be up on docks, but that also doesn't really seem to be the case. You know, I've got, well, what a skip. It's gotta be a fish in there, right? Now even like there, skipping it deep under that, uh, not like that, but <laughs> under that dock and nothing. I would have thought for sure that would be a fish. One thing I'm actually going to try, I'm going to try switching up the jig colors. See if that changes anything. Do like a brown or brown color. Let's see what I got for a trailer to pick with it. Okay, I'm gonna go with this color. I'm gonna put a match scent, the goat colorway creature hog on it. And the knot I usually use, I've just always gone with the uh, good old trusty Palomar. I've watched a few videos online of bass anglers saying that you shouldn't use it for jigs or anything with that level of aggressive hook set. I think that's just wrong. I think you're, and the reason they say that is because they say due to how the knot's tied, it puts a lot of tension in one spot so that on, you know, stark aggressive hook sets, it makes it so that you usually snap off on the hook set. If you're running into that issue, I think you need to look at your hook sets. Not your knot, and I think you need to think about not setting the hook too hard. Because even for bass, you know, bass guys are known for setting the hook ridiculously hard. And most of the times, they set it too hard and 
either set it out of the mouth of the fish or, as I said, snap off on the hook set. I never have any of those issues with the Palomar, so that's why I, I think people just need to uh, check their hook set a little bit more. Okay, let's see if that gets them. A little color change. That'd be something they like. Is there just are they not fish on these docks? Hopefully this kind of. Oh, that felt weird. I think I just ran over a rock though and was being very hasty. There we go. Oh my God, he is puny. He might have been. Two inches. <laughs> okay, well clearly color change didn't matter. I think that one I caught right off the bat is probably bound to be caught anyways, but yeah, and I'm definitely, definitely a little confused right now. See, that one looked like a bass at the top. I wonder if it's, <clears throat> I thought there would be bass in here, you know, eating these panfish that are all in here. And it seems like every once in a while one gets blown up on. So, might be time to go back to the moving bait, but, you know, I tried that and the, uh, jig at the offshore points which I thought would be the best and caught nothing at and then pitching docks I've been able to get three well two in the boat but the biggest one of course not making its way into the boat it is what it is Another little guy. Okay, it's another fish, but I don't still, I'm pretty sure I still yet to land land my first key yeah I definitely am still yet to land my first keeper yet the only one for sure that would have kept out of the group was that one that did not make it into the boat but I'm gonna keep working keep working I'm about to come to the end of these docks and you know, I'll just throw a moving bait again for a while and just keep searching until I find uh where they are, what they want, or whatever the, the stitch is. Got a nice little piece of shoreline coming up right here that could be good for the slobber knocker. Seems to be getting a little weedier in here. Tested that up again. I'm going to take the assumption that those are bass eating bluegill or something and put on a spinnerbait. We'll hopefully provide a slight, slightly better 
replica of a bluegill, especially in this colorway. And you pair that with our good old crappie transformer. We should be pretty, hopefully, money. Maybe find more and or bigger fish. a big old northern <laughs> can't believe you fit in the net there we go Look at that a really nice northern. We can smoke that spinnerbait. Okay, let's let him go. Back off he goes. There we go. There's a bigger fish. Big bass of the day. Okay, a little update, 7.30 a.m. Not been the hottest of mornings. Found four or five bass, two keepers, one didn't make it in the boat. One really nice northern that was a lot of fun, but you know, I tried offshore this morning to start, nothing. Not having much luck pitching docks or casting shore, so I'm gonna go back to the two offshore points that this lake has to offer and then 
Yeah, see see if I can find anything. Probably mainly just throwing the jig and the drop, and I might whip out the drop shot just to see if there's fish here. I can go from there, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. Still pretty calm out, 7.30. I'll probably have about until nine or 10 before it's too crazy, you know, with the, it being the 4th of July, but I'll fish while I can, and uh, hopefully I can find, find a, a group of bass or a bite or a big bass or, something but yeah I'm gonna keep throwing around and see what I can find okay well I think it's gonna be time for me to kind of go try another lake I'm lost once again fish that whole ridge and boulder section and offshore points with just absolutely nothing not even a single bite on a drop shot, a jig, slobber knocker. Definitely very, very unusual and I'm very, very surprised, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I do not know. There we go. You got it on the swim. That was funny. I was swimming that one back really fast and he came up and ate it. I was that one was far from being fished on the bottom anymore. I was just full on swimming that one back when he came and crushed it, which is unusual, but that means that the moving bite's on. That could be a good thing. There we go. Another little guy. Man. Yeah, so the last time I was here and caught fish, it was like, you know, all two and a half, three pounders. Nothing small at all. So seeing all little guys today is definitely uh, interesting. And, you know, Makes me think the biggins may may have moved elsewhere. May have moved elsewhere. a little more like it still nothing crazy but bigger Okay, moving again. Just gonna go try this shorelet by this little canal inlet, and yeah, 
I am, I don't know, running out of ideas. Okay, back to the true and tried, pitching docks. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. There's no more structure. I'm gonna pitch these docks around this inlet and then probably work up on this bank. It looks like it's a little steeper and deeper on it. So maybe that's where they are, but right now, I don't know. It's 8.30, there's starting to be a lot more a lot more boaters out, jet skiers, tubers, leisure boaters. Um, but, so, it is gonna start getting pretty crazy. As you can see, there's, there they are motoring around, which just means big, big, big waves for me, which are no fun to deal with. Oh, well, I can try one more thing, but it's starting to get crazy, so it's pretty much going to be my last thing I try. It's just a different set of docks. Okay, well, it's now time to actually make that move I was going to make. It's the last thing for the day, and then I will get out of here. Oh my god. No. What? Shit, well, I'm not even mad that I lost the fish. I'm mad that he now has a jig in its mouth, which hopefully, hopefully he's not hooked that well and he can spit it, but I hate leaving a fish with a hook in their mouth. Well, first dock in the new spot that I kind of had wanted to go and there was a fish, so that's a good sign, but... Wow. That was weird. My uni must have frayed. It broke. No, it just... What? That is really, really weird. I wonder if when I was pushing those pillars, my uni ran up against one of them and frayed off. And then got weak and I didn't notice until... Now when it broke on that fish. Oh yeah, no, my fire line above the uni's frayed. That's why it snapped so high up. Okay, we're back in business. Big old green pumpkin jig. Let's see if it can do any work. There we go. That's a big one. There we go. Oh, let's stay on. Got terrible leverage on him. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what we like to feel with the jig. Set the hook in a big stick. Shit. Oh. Just lost my camera tripod. I don't know if you guys saw that. I went over with the net as soon as I pulled the net out. Oh, there we go. Well, shoot, man. There goes my tripod. But that's more what we are looking for. Healthy two and a half, three pounder. Nothing crazy, but big fish of the day. Definitely feels good to set the hook on something bigger. Especially on the jig too, because it's fun. You tell right away, like that one. Oop, okay, good thing I paying attention. Line, frayed, retie. Next fish would be lost if I did not. But that one too, I don't know if it was wrapped on something for a second there, 
that hook set stuck. I, I honestly even thought the bass was bigger than that, but that was what we're looking for. You know, if I could find a few more of those, that would make me really happy. Now look at that. It took 30 seconds to retie versus losing my next fish. Before, I was known to risk that. Now, I will always take the fish. But yeah, I don't get it why can't find them offshore. You know, it's been really warm out and hot, so I thought they would have been offshore and deeper. They might just be out of this lake system entirely, like with these lakes being all connected, they can move and hop super easily. So, you know, if it, this lake gets too hot, they can jump to the next lake. Like it's absolutely nothing for them. So I wonder if that's why, you know, all the small ones are. Oh, there was another bite. That's why all the small ones are in here, but Everyone, we've gotten, you know, two bigger ones on the jig, and it's just weird. I'm definitely still confused about today, and never really able to find anything that made me super, super confident. Okay, well, there's new big fish of the day. I didn't even realize how big he was. <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. That's fun. Okay, maybe these are the docks we need to be on. Whew, gotta love that jig bite. That's what we're here hunting for. Okay, two docks in a row, two big fish. I'm liking the change of pace. There we go. Up to four keepers for the day, which, you know, an hour to 10 minutes ago, I didn't, you know, think we'd finish the day with a limit, but one more keeper and it wouldn't have been a big limit, but I still would have caught a limit tournament wise with five, five fish. And that's what I like to uh, target. And then, so one thing that I know a lot of people they weigh soft plastics on like all you need to switch often but like this having one claw gone that does not mean that i need to switch there are tons of crawfish with only one claw as well and you know the bass don't discriminate on the one claws they honestly probably like them even more because you know the claw is the one threatening part of the craw so i'll always see a lot of people just you know lose a claw and put a new one on and ultimately it doesn't matter. Like you're still gonna catch them. If you had two claws there, they're not gonna, at least I wouldn't think they would bite because it had only one claw. But regardless, if you need to save some soft plastics, don't wanna use quite as much, you know, leave it on there with one claw. Why not? Now, when I do lose both claws, that's when I do like to remove it. And, you know, some people would say, well, oh yeah, oh yeah, we found some fish. Oh yeah, we found some fish. We found some fish. We found some fish and they're very healthily sized. Whew, okay, well there's my limit. Out of nowhere. Three fish in the last 10 minutes bigger than the rest of the entire day. That's what we like to see. 
Now they're probably two and a half, uh, three pounder. Another solid fish. Check your line. No frays, no ties. That's good. Okay, well, I don't have confidence really in anything else. So I'm gonna make the drive back. I think my day's done. It's only 9.30, but five to, so four and a half hours, over half a day, got a limit. Um, yeah, it's been tough today. It's really tough finding fish. And now at this point, I could go under that bridge and turn this could go under that bridge to another lake that would have more offshore structure and stuff but at this point too i think it's going to be pretty crazy for fourth of july so yeah i am just going to uh make the drive back and i will talk to you guys when i get there Day's done. It is 10, so I got about four and a half hours of solid fishing. Got one nice northern, um, and then it was probably about nine or 10, 10 ish bass. Five keepers, you know, poundage with those five probably totaled around eight pounds, nine pounds. It wasn't much, and inches wouldn't have been big either, but I was super happy to pull five keepers. Um, it was a very tough tough start to the morning um, I'm looking over kind of my graph right now and I feel like I had a solid plan it was a cooler morning nice and overcast I had some nice offshore points boulders and places to target absolutely nothing definitely put my confidence down at the start of the day went to hitting docks got a few like that the confidence went up and then the next three hours or two hours were pretty much just a downfall of nothing um, whether it was drop shotting moving bait or the jig still and then I made a move to another one of the lower lakes that is uh, on this chain and was still tough got one small one and then found one dock that at the peak had three two two and a half maybe even a three pounder sitting on it and those gave me the last three fish I needed for my limit because up until that point I only had two keepers so yeah super tough day um, everyone I talked to struggled it was tough for everybody most boats I talked to didn't even get a bite, so, you know, I'm happy that I got a limit, a nice big northern, that was a lot of fun, put on a great fight, but yeah, it definitely was, was not what I expected, but yeah, great day, 4th of July, um, happy holidays, be safe, enjoy, and yeah, my goal now will just be to take a nap and crunch edit this and release it, hopefully today, on July 4th, but yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and stay tuned for what's to come i know i've been talking about this black hills video for a while i am actually almost done with it it will be coming soon like hopefully within the next week soon so i've got you got that to look forward to and yeah it's summer fishing all the time and we'll hopefully just keep making content but thanks again for watching and 
hopefully next time we can get on them, get on them a little more. And yeah, 